Good morning. This is the morning news on Remo TV. I am Oluduro Jeremiah. On the national news, it was a black Sunday for the Delta State Police Command yesterday as three of his officers were shot dead by gunmen. This followed the raising of the Fishina Police Station at Usuka in Aniocha, South Luka government area of the state. The attack, which occurred at about 2 a.m., also left some other officers wounded. Luka said they were jolted from sleep by the sound of sporadic gunshots in the sleepy agrarian community as gunmen laid siege to the station. A resident who spoke anonymously said the community now live in fear. People are panicking over what happened last night. There were four policemen on guard. They shot three police officers dead while others got injured. Even police motorcycles at the premises were burnt also. They destroyed vehicles and cut away the ammunition, he said. Acting Public Relations Officer of the Command DSP, Bright Edafi, who regretted the incident, said the disease officers did not include the Division of Police Officer, DPO, as earlier speculated. The State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Ari Muhammad Ali, who also confirmed the attack, said the command lost three officers. Ali described it as a black day for the command of how that the culprit would be brought to book. Still in national news, former Vice President Habubaka Atiku last night called on Indian governors to stop waiting on the federal government to make changes that may not happen anytime soon to solve the myriad of problems bedeviling the country. Instead, Atiku asked leaders to convene national unity summit of all Nigerian governors to iron out the thorny issues affecting the destiny of the nation and figure out a way to resolve them. Atiku made the call in a personal post titled, Nigeria is drifting. We must stop waiting for God, made on his Facebook page. Atiku gave a definition of who a true Nigerian is said that the people, irrespective of their tribe and religion, must be committed to the indivisibility of the country. They called on the men of goodwill among whom were the governors to jettison their party sentiments and work for the unity and progress of the country. On international news, Palestinian and Israeli leaders both appealed for support at the UN Secretary Council session Sunday, but little action was in sight despite sudden violence, with China accusing the United States of obstructionism. After a delay pushed by the United States, Israel critical Haller, the Security Council held its first public meeting on nearly a week of violence that has claimed 200 lives. Opening the virtual session, Secretary General Antonio Guterres called the violence utterly appealing and urged both Palestinian militant Hamas to stop firing rockets into Israel and the Jewish state to stop its massive air campaign on the Gaza Strip. Fighting must stop. It must stop immediately, Guterres said. It has the potential to unleash an uncontainable security and humanitarian crisis and to further foster extremism not only in the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel, but in the region as a whole, he said. Pointing to the heavy toll on civilians, Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad Hal Maliki accused Israel of war crimes and a terminology angrily rejected by Israel appetite. Act now to end the aggression and the assault on our people, our homes, and our land. Act now so freedom can prevail, not appetite, he said. On Sport News, Nigeria striker Asizat Oshola was a late substitute as Barcelona produced an emphatic display to brush aside Chelsea for new in the Women's Champions League final on Sunday. It was the Spanish side first title and they did it in a style at the Ulive Stadium in Gothenburg, Sweden, topping the English champions. Oshola, who had been out of action with injury, was brought on as a 71-minute substitute for Jennifer Amoso after passing a late fitness test. Barcelona took the lead after the ball rebounded off Melanie Lepo's for an own goal after eating the crossbar. The Catalans soon doubled their lead through Alexia Poteles, who scored from the spot in the 14th minute after Hermoso was adjudged to have been fouled in the box. The two goalies soon became three in the 20th minute when Antena Bomati waited off pressure from Jessica Carter to slot the ball into the net after a true pass from Hermoso. Baka completed the road in the 36th minute with a simple tap in from Caroline Eisen. Lastly, on entertainment. Just two days after dropping his sixth studio album of season, J. Cole debuted his first professional basketball game with Rwanda Patriots in the Basketball African League. The Rwanda team faced in Nigeria River Opus and won with 83 to 60 points. The 36 year old 
rapper made his first basket a few minutes into the game. Born Jamal Lama Cole his career in basketball started in Terry Stanford High School in North Carolina. With an academic scholarship, he pursued his dreams in basketball as he tried out as a walk-on at St. John's University. He made the team as one of the 10 callback players during the sophomore year. According to his article featured on Players Tribune, he had to give up his dream of being a professional basketball player for his passion rap. However, in 2012, Cole doubled into the game again when he played for the Eastern team during the NBA All-Star Weekend Celebrity Game. And that will be all on the morning news on Remo TV. For more news, check us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Official Remo TV. This is our website at www.remotv.com.ng. I am Uludro Jeremiah. Good morning.